With Justin Herbert's big payday looming, who could the Chargers cut and still retain themselves as a potential Super Bowl contender? We have a target now for Anthony Davis's return to the Lakers. And Zach Charbonnet declares for the NFL Draft. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and Stark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the faithful Angelino's morning report. And I, once again, am a long way from home. I am broadcasting from Columbus, Ohio. It is January 17th, 2023. Thanks for getting in on the ground floor with the channel. If you like the content we put out, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that and let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. All this time on the road, it's why I created the channel in the first place. So before we go through the news and notes, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard. Yesterday, the Lakers defeated Houston 140 to 132, but that's not the big story. LeBron James dropped a season high 48 points on the Rockets last night in his pursuit of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring mark. Meanwhile, today, Philadelphia is in town to play the Clippers. Paul George, he's missed the last five games, but he is listed as questionable to play tonight. If you're listed as questionable, the chances are really good you're playing. Unless, of course, you're a wide receiver for the Chargers, but that's another story for another time. <laughs> Speaking of the Chargers, let's get to the news. Sports Track listed the top 10 salary cap hits for the Chargers in 2023. Why does this matter? Because Justin Herbert is going to be in the final year of his rookie contract, and he is going to be due. He's about The dude's about to get paid. Let's just call it for what it is. But if you're going to pay somebody in a salary cap, other people got to go. So the Chargers will have some decisions to make. If not this year, then definitely next. The top two people getting paid on the Chargers right now are the edge rushers, Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. The two of them combined make up for 25% of next year's salary cap. So do you sit there and say, okay... <clears throat> we want to start paying Justin Herbert now, and as a result, does the pass rush suffer? Then there are three and four wide receivers, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. Mike Williams, who did not play with a broken back. It sucks, but sometimes you have to make really ugly decisions to fit under the salary cap. Fifth is J.C. Jackson, cornerback. He's a prime candidate to get cut. Center, Corey Lindsley. Seventh is defensive tackle, Austin Johnson. Then comes Michael Davis, Derwin James, a surprisingly affordable number nine in terms of cap hits, and number 10, defensive lineman, Sebastian Joseph Day. Where would you focus? Me, honestly, I would really start to consider cutting the wide receivers. I know everybody loves Keenan Allen, but if you think about it, the Chargers have a distinct lack of speed at wide receiver. And in addition to that, frankly, Keenan Allen and Williams got injured and missed a significant amount of time last year. Do they deserve, as crass as it is, but this is the way the NFL does things, it's a cold-blooded business, do they deserve to continue to get paid when you know you need to keep your franchise quarterback in play? By the way, another potential, even though he's not a huge cap hit, did anybody notice that safety Nasir Adderley did not start after being a starter for pretty much the entire year? And he, too, is a free agent. By the way, speaking of wide receivers, what about Joshua Palmer over in Jacksonville last week? Two catches for 31 yards. I actually think that the Chargers are loaded at quarterback if you could say being loaded with one man is to be loaded. But they're three wide receivers. I'm not sure you keep them all. Turns out after a month of vague rumors, there is now a target for Anthony Davis to return. 
vaguely speaking, it's before Valentine's Day, which is kind of romantic when you think about it, right? I mean, all the sports writers are getting in all the drama, trying to break the Lakers up. Meanwhile, you got Rob Palenka floating rose petals in the lagoon at SoFi Stadium. Maybe somebody in the background playing some Kenny G. Just a thought. It is a time of romance after all. But the reason that they want to get Anthony Davis back on the court before Valentine's Day, there's two reasons. One, there's still going to be a good chunk of the season. Valentine's Day is around the time of the All-Star break. But even more important is that the trade deadline in the NBA is a week before, February 9th. If you're the Lakers front office, you want to see Anthony Davis playing before you start making big blockbuster level trades. You have to see what you have. So, yeah, they need Anthony Davis back before, way before Valentine's Day. Also in Lakers news, Sterling Brown's 10-day contract is up and he was let go. He played four games in 10 days and he didn't score a single point. <laughs> UCLA's running back, Zach Charbonnet, has declared for the NFL draft. Now, much like Jordan Addison over at USC, this was a no-brainer. For that matter, Bruins fans were surprised that he stayed last year. He was so effective with UCLA after transferring over from Michigan. But last year alone, he rushed for 1,359 yards despite missing three games due to injury. How, many, how much higher would he be? in the national rushing leaders if he did not miss those three games. Five Bruins, by the way, have left school early to declare for the NFL draft. Pro Football Focus lists Charbonnet as the number two running back in the upcoming draft behind Bijan Robinson of Texas. So, to be clear, it sounds like a loss. It is a loss. But UCLA has tried to replenish its running back room on the fly so I wouldn't worry too much you just thank Charbonnet for his service and wish him the best in the pros speaking of UCLA over in basketball they are now up in the top five they have a perfect Pac-12 record which will be on the line this weekend because they are playing at Arizona in addition to that a 13 game winning streak the Bruins have made up two spots they were seventh last week they jumped two spots because both Tennessee and UConn lost. By the way, if you are wondering, USC basketball did not have a single vote in the top 25. The NFL Network is reporting that Jets offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur could wind up coming here to the Rams to be their offensive coordinator next year, replacing Liam Cohen, who is basically chased out of town. LaFleur is the brother of Green Bay head coach Matt LaFleur. And Matt LaFleur, by the way, is a former Rams assistant coach. The Jets, well, it's hard to say. Matt LaFleur, or I should say Mike LaFleur, has a decent reputation, but the Jets held him responsible for not developing young quarterback Zach Wilson. On the other hand, Mike LaFleur is said to run an offense with a lot of the concepts that Sean McVay likes to use. So you figure you bring him into a situation with concepts that are similar to McVay, and unlike in New York where he had to develop Zach Wilson, you don't have to develop Matthew Stafford into being an NFL quarterback. <laughs> By the way, we spoke earlier of the Chargers cap hits for next year. Five L.A. Rams, five of them, earn more than $20 million next year, according to Over the Cap. That would be Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, Leonard Floyd, and Matthew Stafford. Allen Robinson, by the way, you think he, with all that money that was being wasted on him, you think it was over $20 million. You'd be wrong. It's 18 Yikes. Ricky Pooj thinks the Galaxy, quote, have a big chance, unquote, to hoist MLS Cup this season. Pooj came over from FC Barcelona, scored three goals, and uh, recorded five assists in 827 minutes. He was a clear game changer for the Galaxy. Because going into the playoffs, they had only lost once in their last 11 games. 
They won a playoff game. They took the eventual champion LAFC to the limit in a tremendous El Trafico match. Of course, the black and gold won, went on to win the cup. Finally, the LA Sparks, the rebuild of the two-time WNBA champs has begun. The Sparks have sent three players that I don't know a damn thing about to Connecticut for a player I had never heard of and a draft pick I'm sure I'll forget. However, this is my guess because I did do a little reading on it. The guard's name is Jasmine Thomas. Thomas has played 12 years in the WNBA and the Sparks coach, their new coach, came from Connecticut. This is my thoughts. I'm guessing he's thinking that Thomas can come in and shorten the learning curve for all the other players that LA is going to bring in. Thomas, by the way, is not just a whiz in terms of running an offense as a point guard. She's a five-time all-defensive player in the WNBA. <coughs> so, you let me know what you think in the comments thread. If you like the content we put out about LA sports, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day, no matter where the hell I am. Alaska, Nebraska, Vegas, and now Columbus, Ohio. There have been dozens of places where I've been taking this little show. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.